أربعين أب سيد الشهداء حسين بن علي عليه الصلاة والسلام I would like to take this opportunity to reflect on a passage from the Ziyarat of Arba'een. There are two different versions. One is a shorter one, one is a longer one. And the message that we get from the Ziyarat of Arba'een is, is very important. The Ziyarat that we have come from our Imams. These are not the writings of our scholars. And it's not an not only an issue of, you know, paying our respects to the Imam and the Shahadat of his family and companion. It also has messages for us. That what does it mean to connect to Imam Hussain alayhi salam and his cause? A very powerful statement from Ziyarat of Arba'een is, لَبَيْكْ دَعْيَ Allah," Where you are responding to the call of somebody who is known as Da'i Allah. Da'i Allah means somebody who is calling people towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even the way of addressing Imam Hussain alayhi salam is very important. That he is Da'i of Allah for us. When we say to him, Labbaik, when we respond to his call, what are we referring to? And this is where we say, إن كان لم يجبك بدني عند استغاثتك ولساني عند استنصارك. The Hussein, we came to this dunya centuries after Karbala. Physically, we were not present there. When you said, حل من ناصر ينصرنا وحل من مغيث يغيثنا. When you did استغاثة, we were not physically there. You know, to hear that or to respond to it. But this is where it comes to us now. Although centuries have passed away, we are physically, we were not physically present there on the day of Ashura in Karbala. فَقَدْ أَجَابَكَ By reciting that ziyarat, we are committing ourselves to Imam Hussain al-Islam by saying that although physically, we were not there 1400 years ago in Karbala, فَقَدْ أَجَابَكَ But the response is coming to you. From where? فَقَدْ أَجَابَكَ قَلْبِي وَبَصَرِي وَسَمْعِي My heart is responding to you. My eyes are responding to you. My ears are responding to you. You know, ponder on those words that we have from the Masumin. What does it mean? When we say to Imam Hussain alayhi salam, لَبَّيْكْ دَعْيَ You know, my heart is responding to you, قَدْ أَجَابَكَ Means the jawab is coming from me to you. But the jawab is coming and the response is coming on the level of my heart and from my eyes and my ears. And this is where we see that, you know, even the ziyarat, they actually are messages for us from our imams. That how you have to connect to Imam Sayyid alayhi salam, even though you were not there at that time. On the level of qalbi, on the level of the heart responding to the call of Imam Sayyid alayhi salam, this is basically the spiritual and intellectual response. And what it means is we have to reflect and ponder on the causes for which Imam Sayyid alayhi salam sacrificed everything. We have to think about his mission. Why did he do this? And this is summarized in his will that he wrote before he left uh, Medina, where he says, إِنَّمَا خَرَجْتُ لِطَلَبِ الْإِصْلَافِ فِي أُمَّةِ جَدِّي He says, I have risen against Yazid for only one reason. إِنَّمَا here is, you know, kind of hasr. Hasr means uh, the only reason for me to do this one thing only, to seek reformation of the community of my grandfather, to reform them. Because there is always chances of deviation. Sometimes the deviation is, you know, uh, minor. Sometimes the deviation is, is major. Many times the deviation is on a personal and individual level. At other times it is on a communal level. And Imam Hussain says, My purpose for everything is to seek reformation of the ummah 
of my grandfather. And how is he doing it? He says, أريد أن أأمر بالمعروف وعنه عن المنكر That the way I'm going to do the reformation is by promoting good in the society and discouraging evil in the society. أمر بالمعروف وعنه عن المنكر has different levels. On a personal level, on a communal level, on the level of the status of a person. Everybody has to relate to it according to their own circumstances, their own levels, and their own capabilities of, you know, how much influential they are, you know, in, in reforming themselves and others. And so you have to keep that issue of darajat in, in your mind when we talk about Amr bil maruf in Nahi al Munkar. And even the method of Amr bil maruf and Nahi al Munkar has to be based on wisdom. You know, we are talking about hikmat and good advice, not in an abusive uh, language. And not only that, further on, Hussein writes, وَأَسِيرُ وَأَسِيرَ بِسِيرَةِ جَدِّي وَعَبِي عَلِي بِنَ بِطَالِبِ And by doing this, the reformation that I'm bringing is actually the path of my grandfather and my father. On the level of qalb, when we say, فَقَدْ أَجَابَكَ قَلْبِي This is what we are saying, that Hussein, we know our line is very clear. We go through you to the imams of Ahlul Bayt, we go through you to your father, and from your father to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so our aqidah has to be correct. One, you know, response to imam's call on a spiritual, intellectual level is to have proper aqidah, proper, you know, connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the right channel. And the second is to see that what was the uh, purpose of the sacrifice of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Then the words sam'i wa basari. That even my ears are responding to your call. And my eyes are responding to your call. What does it mean? You know, the list could have gone. My hand, my tongue, my belly. But, you know, this is just an indication. This is only ishara, as we call it. You had to just fill in the blank there. That the first part of our qalb was the spiritual and intellectual response to Imam's call. To have proper understanding of our faith. Proper understanding of the cause of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. And the second is the physical response to Imam. Sam'a and basar, you know, the eyes and the ears reflect this physical, you know, commitment that we have. These are the limbs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. And the proper response to the call of Hussain is to use our body in the right way. To do what is physically required of us to do. And this can be seen in the words of this ziyarat and other ziyarat. That our sixth Imam, Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salatu wa salam. He says after doing the salam to the Imam. Acknowledge his accomplishment. What did he do? Ashhadu annaka qad aqamta salat I testify that you establish salat and you establish this process of giving in charity. And you establish this principle of promoting good and discouraging evil. And in short, in short, you obeyed Allah and Rasul till the last moment of your life. That is the summary of the success of Imam Salam in Karbala. On a physical level, namaz is there as a commitment towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zakat, giving in charity, is a physical you know, commitment that we have to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fulfill the rights of the fellow human beings. And Amr bin Ma'roof and Nahi al-Munkar is more a social responsibility that we have. To always you know, seek the opportunities in the right way. This is very important. The method of Amr bil Maruf and Nahil Munkar has to be understood properly. It should be done on the basis of wisdom. 
and not in an abusive la language. And that is the communal responsibility that we have. And to summarize that, we have to obey, physically obey Allah and Rasul and the Islam which has been, you know, preserved by the sacrifice of Hussein bin Ali and his family and his companions on the day of Ashura. Salawat. If our body does not positively respond to Hussein bin Ali, what happens? Sometimes we say, okay, you know, halal food, so what? It's not a big deal. We'll just digest it. You know, hearing this thing or that thing, watching this and that. You know, these are all very minor issues. As, after all, I go to the majalis of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, I do the matam, I know her, I cry, I go for the ziyarat of the imam and the masumin. It doesn't really matter what I do on a physical level. But this is where we have to realize. فَقَدْ أَجَابَكَ قَلْبِي وَسَمْعِي وَبَصَرِي It's not only this spiritual commitment that yes, in my heart I am with Hussein. Even on a physical level, we have to be with Hussein. And with the da'wat and call of Hussein. Because simple things that we do, if I do not respond to the call of Imam Hussain alayhi salam on a physical level by doing things which are haram, it has an impact on my response to Hussain on the level of my qalb and heart. And see the example on the day of Ashura. Imam more than once addressed the Yazidi forces. The first one where he introduces himself to make sure nobody says on the day of Qiyamah there that we didn't know who was this person. And that is a longer khutbah that he gave. But then after that, there were other moments also where Imam, you know, sought that opportunity to talk to the Yazidi forces. In one of those, he says something very important for us to reflect on it. He says, وَيْلَكُمْ مَا عَلَيْكُمْ أَنْ تَنْصِطُوا إِلَيَّ وَتَصْمَعُوا قَوْلِي What is the matter with you? That you do not listen to what I'm saying. You don't, you know, hear what I'm saying to you. I call them to the path of guidance. I call you to the path of guidance. Whoever follows me will be among those who have been rightly guided. And whoever disobeys me here, he will be among those who will perish on the day of Qiyamah. And then he says, all of you who are not responding to me, you are actually disobeying my command, not listening to what I'm saying. Why are you not listening? This is now he says, فَقَدْ مَلَعَتْ بُطُونُكُمْ مِنَ الْحَرَامِ He says, you know what is preventing you from listening to me? You know what is preventing you from obeying me and supporting me? He says, what your belly carries from the haram food. We might think, you know, eating haram here and there a little bit doesn't matter. Imam Hussain alayhi salam says, even haram food on a physical level can become a barrier when even the Imam of Noor is in front of you and talking to you. It is not an issue of, you know, getting guidance from here and there. The Imam of Noor is there. He is talking to them and he says, I understand why you do not listen to me. Because malat butunukum min al-haram, your bellies are filled with haram food. ala And therefore there is a veil and a seal put on your heart. And so when we talk about this response on a spiritual level, we are to make sure it's not only فَقَدْ أَجَابَكَ قَلْبِي It has to be also وَالسَّمْعِي وَبَصَرِي Even on a physical level, we have to respond to the call of Hussein bin Ali in order to try our best to fulfill the commandments of Allah and Rasul and the Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa salatu wa salam. إِنَّ أَحْسَلَ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ الْعَزِيزِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ 
والعصر إن الإنسان لا في خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر أعوذ بالله من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي لا إله إلا هو الحليم الكريم غافر الضنب بقابل التوبة وهو الغفور الرحيم ونشهد أن لا إله إلا هو العطوف للعباد بجوده والعواد على المضربين بحلمه ونشهد أن محمد النبي هو حبيبا سيد المرسلين والشفيع المضنبين ورحمة للعالمين صلى الله عليه وعاله الداعين إلى سبيل الله بالحكمة والموزة الحسنة قادة الأمم وأولياء النعمة ومعدن الرحمة حسوكم عباد الله بالطوبة ما صلف من ظنوبكم The Arabian of Sayyid al-Shuhada the way it was commemorated on a global level by the Shias is actually a testimony of the victory of Imam Hussain alayhi salam against Yazid. Not only Yazid of that time, but even his ideological descendants in form of the takfiris who are around the world. Many, many people have come in history to try to prevent the Shias for going for the ziyarat of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. I think the insistence on the enemies to prevent the Shias from the Ziyarat shows that Ziyarat is indeed very powerful. If it was really not an important thing, if it didn't really have an impact on the Shia community, they would not be, you know, worried about it. They would say, let them do it, so what? But they know that this is very, you know, important way of keeping the community together you know, reviving the spirit about the Islamic faith, you know, renewing that commitment to the uh, cause of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. And therefore we see in the past, during the days of the 10th and 11th Imam, you had people like Mutawakkil. We even tried to erase these signs of the grave of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. You know, basically uh, erase it to the ground. But he died and failed. The Shias still wait for Ziyarat. You know, maybe for a temporary phase they might be prevented, but whenever they get the opportunity again, they actually come back to this tradition even more powerfully. In our own time, we have seen Saddam. You know, just think about it. Somebody who had the largest Arab army in the Middle East, had the oil of, uh, you know, a wealth of oil, he was afraid of whom? This unarmed men and women and children walking from their villages and towns to Karbala on the days of Arba'in? Just think about it. In their eyes, this became a very serious issue, the threat. And Saddam prevented, tried quite a lot to prevent or to reduce and create barriers for these a tradition which was there for centuries among the Iraqis to go to Karbala by walking. Not because they didn't have money to travel on horses and camels or buses and cars. No, this is, this is their spirit. They wanted to show their, you know, sense of kind of to be in this same, uh, you know, feeling of suffering. And so this is how they were doing it. And so when we see that Saddam, in his own lifetime, after his downfall, he saw that the Shias in Iraq, the first Arba'een after the downfall of Saddam, came in bigger numbers than seen before. And alhamdulillah, every year the numbers are increasing. And this is where we see that, you know, Azaf Sayyid al-Shuhada has its own life, has its own impact. And this is the survival line for the Shia community. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there to protect it. Of course, the takfiris have been there all the time, creating, 
you know, problems, explosions have been going on in Iraq on a weekly basis. And closer to these events of Muharram and Arba'een, that increase. But that does not in any way dent the spirit of the Shias who love Hussein bin Ali alayhi salatu wa salam. We are not seeing a sing- single example where a procession or a group decided to turn back. Explosions happen, but we still continue. And this is where they, don't, they do not realize that pull, the magnetic pull which is there for the cause of Hussein bin Ali is something they actually envy. Why don't we have something like that? And that is why they attack it. Even you look at the example, not only in Iraq, in Pakistan, in Rawalpindi, the way there were, uh, you know, disruptions in uh, the procession um, of Ashura. And then the plan by these takfiri thugs to prevent that uh, procession of Arba'een. But alhamdulillah, you know, they fail. Whether it's the takfiris in Iraq or those who are in Pakistan, and the important thing in case of Rawal Pindi is that we see that even Sunnis, not the extremist, uh, you know, Salafis. We are talking about Sunnis join in this procession. Even some of the Christians came to show support for the rights of the minorities in that country. Even the Shias came in bigger number than before to the town for uh, uh, the procession of Arba'een. And I think this presence of Sunnis in the procession of Arba'een in Rawalpindi, this strengthens the point that we have been making for many, many years in the khutbahs and other places. We have to differentiate between the extremist Wahhabi Salafis and the rest of the Sunnis. The problem of our community is that they do not distinguish one from the other. Even the speakers, the way they speak, they actually discourage the Sunnis from joining in. And this is where we are, we are talking about, that we are not talking about eliminating the differences, not talking about the historical differences or the aqidah differences. These have to be mentioned. But the language of discourse is the issue. How you speak, use civil language, and, you know, do not use abusive language. That is the only point we have here. And that is where we will see that if we can get Sunnis to join in these kinds of rituals the way it was done in the past, you will see that the Wahhabis and the Salafis will find it even more difficult to attack the rituals of the Shias, inshallah. Salawat man ikbar. You know, it's amazing that Imam Hussain alayhi salam on the day of Ashura, he talks about importance of avoiding haram food. Tell me, is this a shari mas'ala or a aqidah mas'ala? Because we have been hearing, even from those who are not ulama, that, oh, madlis is not for masail of shari. On the day of Ashura, Imam Hussain alayhi salam is talking about the impact of a shari mas'ala that if you eat haram, it creates a barrier on your heart from listening to the message of Allah Rasul and the Imam. And so let us understand what is the cause of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. You know, then we have to realize the reality and we have to make Imam a universal personality. Is not only for the Shias, he is for the human world. On this issue of, you know, explosions in Iraq, this time we also saw, and this is not the first time, that there was also an explosion uh, which took place outside a Christian church. The Shia ulama have always, even in the past, condemned that. And we also have talked about, for example, what happens to the minority Christians in Egypt. That this is absolutely against the spirit of the letter of Imam Ali salam that he wrote to Malik Ashtar for Egypt especially. And so we were in a way surprised to hear that our Prime Minister 
It means they know what is happening, whether it's Iraq or Pakistan. May they comment condemning the terrorist activities outside the Christian church in Iraq. And there is nothing wrong with that. That is actually something, the right thing to do. But we have never yet heard a single statement from this government condemning the terrorist activities and actions against the Shia minority in Pakistan. It's not that they don't know about it. This government has actually established a, a special office this year known as the Office of Religious Freedom, which was declared as a, you know, office which will cater to the rights of the minorities around the world. But it seems the only minorities they care to talk about are the Christian minorities. They don't want to talk about other minorities. And I don't believe that they don't know the reality. They know the reality. They see what is happening in Pakistan. Because when it happens to the Qadianis, they speak about it. But it seems when it comes to the Shias, there is not a single statement that we have seen from the Canadian government condemning violence against the Shia minority in Pakistan. And this is something we have to keep in mind, especially when we, you know, uh, reach to the point of making the decisions as Canadian citizens when it comes to the democratic right of casting the votes. And this has to be communicated very clearly, that you can have an office of religious freedom, but it has to be for all minorities around the world. اللهم صل على سيد المرسلين وشفيع المذنبين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وعلى إمام المتقين وأمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب صلوات الله عليه وعلى سيدة نساء العالمين سيدتنا فاطمة بنت رسول الله صلوات الله عليها وعلى سيد الشباب أحل الجنة لحسن المجتبى ولحسين الشهيد بكربلاء عليهم الصلاة والسلام ولعيمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي عليهم الصلاة والسلام اللهم صل على, صل على مولانا الحجة بن الحسن صاحب العصر والزمان ما حيا صار البدء والتغيان هذه من أبنية الشرك والنفاق حاصد فرو البغ والشقاق صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آباء الكرام ما اتصلت الليالي والأيام اللهم عجل الفرج وصح المخرج وقح الناظرنا بنظرة منا إليه واجعلنا من المستشهدين بين يديه اللهم اجعلنا ممن يذكر فتنفعه الذكرى إن الله يعمر بالعدل والإحسان ويتائز القربى وينهان الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون